Hi and welcome to the Drive School. Today we are going to take a look at common mode from frequency converters. What is common mode and what can we do about it? Frequency converters basically convert the frequency from the incoming supply to some other frequency which we can control a motor, RPM and torque. However, there is a small setback with this because we are using some technology that produce common mode and EMC. Why? The incoming supply to a frequency converter is in balance. The three phases coming in have a neutral point which is zero. So the sum of these are in totally balance zero. What happened in the frequency converter is that we use a diode rectifier to rectify the AC into DC voltage. We store this energy and voltage on big capacitors, looks like this. Then to produce the AC, we have transistors here. IGBTs, big industrial transistors, which produce a new AC where we can select the frequency. And the frequency we push it through the motor will control the RPM of the motor. Of course, these transistors can only be turned on and off. So to produce a beautiful, nice sinus, we have to do it in a little bit primitive way. What we do, we turn on these IGBTs for a very short time when we want the sinus to be small. And the bigger part of the sinus, the fat parts, we increase the width of the pulses. This is called pulse width modulation. And every time we do this, well, this is the switching frequency. Well, what happened on the motor side when we do this switching frequency? To make this motor spin, I want the current to go in this direction and this direction. And then I want the current to go back here. So actually what we do then, we turn on this transistor and maybe this transistor, which make the current flow here and also here. For the returning current, we go back here. And here we already can identify the problem because what we have done now is connecting two transistors to the plus side and only one to the minus side. What happened with this neutral point in the motor then? Well, if you look at it in an oscilloscope, we will see that we actually have lifted the star point up. And this can be quite high. It can be the full DC voltage. So we are talking about here 1000 volts. So we have created a zero point which is jumping up and down. Depending on the combination of these transistors, this neutral point is no more a neutral point. It goes up and down with a switching frequency. What is the consequence on a motor when you have a star point which is jumping up and down? Well, actually not much because this star point is floating inside all motors. There is no connection between this star point and the metal in the motor, at least not in an ideal world. So we allow the star point to rotate inside the motor. We kind of have anchored our neutral point here. This is the protective earth and the chassis, everything in the frequency converter is connected to the PE. Good. As long as this motor have a floating star point, 
this will work. What happens if we connect this star point to ground? Is that possible? Yes, especially with capacitive connection. There could be stray capacitance between the stator windings and the motor's chassis. Going back here. Okay, this voltage will drive a current back to here. So, we got a current, a circulating current going on. A current flowing will create a magnet field. A magnet field is radio waves and is produce EMC. So, we don't want to anchor this neutral point to the ground. You need one part of the frequency converter to be floating. It needs a free rotating neutral point. This jumping voltage, and quite high voltage also, it's the full DC voltage, can be up to 1000 volts. Will it transfer all the way to the supply? Yes. Anchored to the PE, the whole DC system will be affected and it will transfer over here. If there is no connection here, okay, the whole system will rotate with a common mode. If it's connected, there will be a circulating current. A circulating current producing a magnet field, producing radio waves and interference. What can we do to reduce the problems with common mode? Well, of course, reduce the size of this stray capacitance as much as possible. Good motors have very low stray capacitance between the stator windings and the metal chassis in the motor. Also good cables will help a lot. You don't want stray capacitance between the three faces and the protective earth because that will give a leaking current producing circulating currents in the system. Let's say we have too much stray capacitance in this side of the frequency converter system. Are there something we can do? Yes. Well, this connection might be possible to break with a transformer. So, an isolating transformer here, where the neutral point is not connected to protective earth, would solve this problem. So, distribution systems with a lot of frequency converters, you should think of the neutral point of the distribution transformer to maybe not have the neutral point connected to Earth, or at least just monitor it. One of the most common places to get a problem with a common mode is Earth fault warning system here on the supply grid. In a building you might get some warnings and tripping of the Earth fault or insulation me measuring equipment. And what actually happens is that most of these systems are based on a summary trafo here and you have a measuring device. Well, it will now measure this circulating current because the current going back and forth here will also in summary be seen here. So this instrument will see this as a current. If it detects it as a fault, it trips. It should be able to differentiate between high frequency currents and the 50 Hertz, because real earth faults are only on the 50 Hertz, not on the kilohertz. Also some earth fault and insulation metering systems are placed here in this point. It can measure any voltage difference between the neutral point in the generators and transformers and the protective earth. It will also see this common mode, of course. If there is a connection between here and protective earth, it will see this and it will trip. The answer again is to have an insulation meter 
which is built for frequency converter. There are many vendors that uh, have this equipment. Bender is one of the best. And um, this one will differentiate between high frequency voltage and the 60 hertz, the real problem. One other thing that can be done to protect the supply grid from common mode is to utilize a high frequency capacitor filter. And what it actually do, it look at the balance between the three phases and anchor them to the protective earth. So any unbalance here will leak through the protective earth here. So basically you create the circulating current inside this system and you avoid to have the common mode distributed to your grid. The high frequency caps can be used when you have a grounded system like in uh, buildings onshore when you have TNS and TN kind of uh, supply grids but on board in ships this might be a problem because the ground is floating. You have a so-called IT power system. Then you are not allowed to use these HF caps directly to the protective earth. So it's a little bit different between onshore installations and offshore installation in maritime industry. Thank you for watching and um, the next topic we will look at is frequency converter powering batteries, energy storage, some really cool stuff.